Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This year I would like to share more than just Lost Ark with you. So in this video, I would like to talk about my top three MMORPGs that I think are 100% worth to play in 2020. And also this year, I would like to talk about new and upcoming MMORPGs, try them, review them, teach you how to play them if they need teaching. But until then, let's get into the top three MMORPGs for 2020 in my opinion i'm gonna start with my number one an amazing game probably my second favorite game ever and that is guild wars 2 every single time i log into guild wars 2 i remember how good this game is one of the few titles out there that brings outstanding quality and a lot of fun together in a very good looking world leveling up is a joy really probably the only mmorpg where i didn't hate leveling to end game nor did i feel bothered by but by what i had to do or how long i had to do it a real pleasure to level up in guild wars 2 there's also an instant boost to max level in the cash shop which is absolutely fabulous in 2020 and with it comes a set of gear and access to uh, all the end game content you're not locked behind some other thing that you need to either purchase or do you just hit 50 and then you have everything available. The combat feels great and there's so much good content in the game. There's the PvE side where you can do dungeons and then the elite versions of dungeons which are called fractals. Then there's raids for larger groups which bring even more difficult challenges than the fractals. Another amazing part of Guild Wars 2 is the fact that there is also open world PvE which actually means something. It's so rare these days in MMORPGs to have this open world world large scale pve that is actually important and that people actually do with pleasure their map events for the whole community to take part of are just simply genius and actually timeless did i almost forget the story part of the pve side of things which by the way the story is a core part of guild wars 2 guild wars 2 is kind of a story mmorpg um i did almost forget it because i'm not into story but the few chapters of it which i've done were a great experience and there's the pvp part with instanced arenas for 5v5 content ranked seasons and monthly tournaments with actual attractive prices they used to have like this esports kind of thing like black desert had last year um but they don't have it anymore sadly this was another great and super attractive part of, of PvP in Guild Wars 2. Instanced organized PvP is a big part of Guild Wars 2, and besides the class imbalance, which by the way exists in every MMORPG, the combat is fair, the gear is equal for everyone to an absurd level. The second big part of PvP is the open world one, where your server fights two other servers in a gigantic map with objectives and all the good stuff really. Here in open world PvP is where blob versus blob happens and it's absolutely magical. I mean listen to this. Don't worry about me, he's stuck behind me, stuck behind me. It's a lot of fun and besides that you can roam solo or in smaller groups if you're that type so there's a lot of content for pvpers in the open world as well the cash shop in the game is super fair because of the way gearing and progression is done in the game full of cosmetics and convenience items that are very attractive to buy but for the right reasons right it's very important there is actually a currency conversion as well and again super fair because of how gold interacts with gear and items in the game it's 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 not even in the realm of pay to win that's what i'm trying to say overall guild wars 2 is a landmark game with breakthrough mmorpg ideas it's my it's, it's my top pick for 2020 highly recommend this game to you at number two stands final fantasy 14 and i'm quite ashamed to say that i've never played the game since this year actually in, in in January in in like this time in between the first of January and now I've played two MMORPGs that I've never played before Final Fantasy 14 and Black Desert and I'm just gonna spoil it for you I'm gonna spoil this video for you right now Black Desert is at number three and Final Fantasy 14 is at number two pick for me top three 
best MMORPGs for you to be involved in in 2020. I had a blast really playing Final Fantasy XIV to a point where I'm considering reviewing it in a separate video. Same thing happened in BDO. The game just turned 9 years last September, but it doesn't look like it's nine years old. It looks very well done. It looks pleasing visually. The skills look good. The world looks good too. Super satisfied with the graphics and I am a very picky person in that category. Actually all three of these MMOs that I'm talking about in this video are very satisfying graphically. Of course Black Desert being the best one and then Guild Wars 2 and then Final Fantasy if you want me to rate them in an order. I think the best way I can describe Final Fantasy 14 to you is that it's a, it's a whole nother experience. You don't really hear about Final Fantasy 14, at least not in my world. There's no buzz around it, nobody really talks about it, there's no drama around it. But the truth is, it's the third most popular MMORPG out there after World of Warcraft and BDO. There's, it's huge, there's a lot of players playing it and speaking about players, the community is absolutely fantastic. Can I just say that? They're super shy or, or about talking in, in like public chats for some reason, they never yell somewhere in towns, they never shout, they never do anything, but when you ask a question, it's instantly 10 whispers with the answer. Super helpful. I joined some of their Discord channels. Really nice people behind the keyboard. They just don't chat in game. It's their thing. A weird but lovely group of people nonetheless. The game is amazing but weird too. It feels like the real deal. Like you're, like you're part of something. It feels complete and vast and difficult and fun yet serious. Hard to describe it in words really but I feel like it can be your main MMORPG for the next few years easily. My leveling experience in the game was quite boring to be honest and it, it felt really really long. I don't know if it was the day that I was playing it in, well days, um, but I found out later on that there is a max level boost in the cash shop. Purchased it right away baby because I love max level boosts in 2020 in MMORPGs and then I realized that even with the max level boost I can't really do anything because I need a max story boost as well. So I purchased that one also. Speaking about the cash shop, it's super fair, same as in Guild Wars. I don't even want to talk about it because there's nothing to talk about the cash shop in, in Final Fantasy XIV. Very nice, bizarre, same, like, same as the rest of the game where it's not integrated in the game. You have to go outside on a website and then purchase your items there. Very strange, but the game itself and everything in it, including the players, feel like a, like a very solid experience. Very rare these days to find an MMORPG that actually feels solid, fun and serious at the same time. All of them, many of them, most of them kind of feel like these, these uh, one-time cash grabs, if you may, or whatever, you play it and then you get bored in T-3 days. This one, no, really nice, very appreciated, thumbs up for the people who make it because they've made a really nice jewel here that I personally haven't tried up until this year. Classes and class customization is pretty sufficient to tell you the truth. There is not much you can customize a single class with, but there's like a lot of different classes, standalone classes. So that's fine, not every MMORPG has to have five classes and they themselves can be customized to infinity. Some MMORPGs have just a lot of different classes and that's how they do it with fewer customization per class. Really, really nice. One of the main things I appreciate in MMORPGs in general is if there is any class customization to keep me busy. Here, if I don't, if I get bored of my class, I can just simply make an alt of a different class with a completely different playstyle and roll maybe in the party. There is the Holy Trinity, Healer, Tank, DPS. Also, regarding the Holy Trinity, very important I would like to mention, the fact that tanks and healers are very respected in Final Fantasy XIV. Again, something that brings me all the way back to how MMORPGs used to be back in the days, I don't know, 10 years ago when I started, 12 years ago, where everyone that played the game had this, this, this nice respect towards 
the role of the class. You really respected the healer, you know, you really respected the tank, you followed him, you let him go first. Here in Final Fantasy, this is exactly what they do. Super, super nice, very cute bunch of people. I don't get to see this that, that much these days because most of the times I play games that don't have a healer tank DPS these days, but also if I do, then nobody really cares. A, a second tank can just go ahead. A, a DPS is so geared that he can just pull all the mobs and the, the, the tank is all the way at the back sleeping. But in Final Fantasy, Fantasy, very nice thing to, to have noticed this, uh, this respect towards healers and tanks. As for PvE in general, me as a player who has been in quite a few MMORPGs, I love it. It starts out simple and it gets complex at the very top. There's uh, telegraphs and there's very many boss mechanics, which again is something I love in MMORPGs. Not to mention the difficulty of some PvE content is really really up there so there is challenge and glory within the community in overcoming that challenge this is also important because if 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 there is challenge but nobody in the game appreciates you for it or nobody in the game cares about it then th that's that's really not rewarding that's really not a challenge it's just something whatever i feel that PvP in Final Fantasy 14 is kind of taking a back seat in the game they have a variety of types of PvP. They have instance PvP with like small man arenas, large man arenas, 24v24. They have like um, ranked seasons and unranked PvP. So there is a lot of types of PvP to play. But for some reason, I, I never heard anyone talking about PvP. I never heard anyone wanting to go there. I've been on a couple of discords. I, I, I've been in a few parties. So nobody really kind of mentioned pvp so i i feel from my perspective as a new player that pvp is at the back seat pve is like the main focus of the game everyone is buzzing around pve that raid that dungeon and let's do mechanics let's get together which class is the best dps and so on so um, they they're doing good in that sense pvp is really nice by the way i've done i think one of these arenas and i felt like it's quite legit i feel that in pvp in final fantasy 14 group chemistry matters a lot like everywhere is just a, a bunch of randoms right queuing up with you but i feel somehow that in final fantasy 14 these bunch of randoms i don't know somehow somehow they matter more than than in other mmorpgs this is my impression after just one arena that i've done in in uh, in um, final fantasy so far definitely looking forward to doing more of pvp in the game so i can get even a better overview on on what's going on there but just saying if you're the pve kind of person then final fantasy 14 is definitely the game for you for me the game gave me this feeling that i need to be there I need to grind, I need to learn, I need to make friends, I need to join a guild and I need to start doing content. That's the feeling I got uh, uh, throughout each day of playing it. And that's quite of a scary feeling for me as a player who is not a Final Fantasy XIV player. I was, uh, I actually, one of these days I actually logged off on purpose because I was just a little bit too invested in the game and I didn't really want to get carried away and j just be that invested. So it's a little bit funny, but scary. It's a good MMORPG. Again, super, super recommended to you. My third pick for 2020 is Black Desert Online. And this is a dark horse for me. I've never played Black Desert up until 2020. And I can say that it's a lovely MMORPG. Just saying. I never played it for a variety of reasons. First, I live in a country in which when Black Desert came out, I was region locked to playing the Russian client. And even if I could play that with an English patch, which was available at that time, I really didn't want to. I never play MMORPGs that are not meant for me because it's always risky. When the European version came, which I could play because I am in the European Union, um, I could only purchase it from Steam and Steam was locking me out from Black Desert specifically. I played it this year and may I just say what a what a nice MMORPG it is. Clap, clap for the people who play it and for the people who made it. Very nice 
place to be in 2020 exceptionally good graphics a little bit towards the the uh, kind of OCD side of graphics and skill looks but once you get used to it and once you find the appropriate class for you it's absolutely great there is PvE in the game and uh, there is PvP in the game PvP in Black Desert Online is a core part of the game there is a lot of open world PvP going on there is instance PvP as well like organized and on top of that, last year they had their first, I believe, esports tournament with PvP teams from various regions competing in a qualifier. And then after that, they were invited to a LAN party. I think it was for $10,000. Really, really nice. I love it when MMORPGs have esports tournaments. I absolutely love it. I don't care about the balance in between classes. You choose your comp. If you play it well, you're still going to win. And I like the fact that these MMORPGs like a, a BDO in, in the West and Lost Ark also in, in Korea, they have the balls to do this, even though it's an MMORPG and everyone says it doesn't work, but it does look at World of Warcraft. Very good job to the people who handle PvP in uh, in um, uh, Black Desert. On top of that, there is the whole PvE side, there is the whole farming side. I don't even know how to begin describing the PvE side of things in, in, in Black Desert. Besides the fact that it's huge, there is a lot of grinding in the game. The game is focused on on grinding in the open world, grinding mobs, doing your combos right, playing your class nicely and efficiently. Um, on top of that, there is a lot of RNG in the game, which makes it obviously for annoying time at times, but then the other times it's really fun and it just keeps people posted. I know myself that RNG keeps people there. I also know myself that some people say that Black Desert is, is, is also mildly pay to win. That's perfectly fine, boys. And you know why? Because a game never, ever, ever died because it was pay to win, period. A game only died if it was pay to win and bad at the same time as a game. Or just bad as a game and no pay to win in it it still died so mild pay to win or pay to win in the gray area like 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 um, uh, people say black desert is is never gonna ruin any game at the moment of this video black desert is the second most populated mmorpg out there so if you want an experience that has a lot of players and that has a lot of traction and that gets a lot of views then black desert is definitely a good place to start off world of warcraft is the only mmorpg that gets more traction than black desert online lastly i want to say that i also love the fact that the developers are putting in the effort to always upgrade the game black desert just recently got a remastered version of it always new classes there's always new things in the game super super nice to see that even after years of being out the game is still well taken care of as much as it is possible to take care of the game without changing its core foundation the way it works so if you haven't played one or more of these mmorpgs they're definitely worth giving a try at least to see if that is for you or it's not for you they are all a great experience even if played for a week or, or two or a month or two super super nice games lovely content in them and a great experience overall for you as an MMORPG player to grow and to see what the grass is like on the other side as well until you find your perfect MMORPG that I'm also searching for. So these are my picks guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope maybe you're gonna find some joy this year with one of these MMORPGs. I know I will. And uh, until my next video, I wish you lots of love. Thank you so much for your time watching and I'm gonna see you really really soon.